This is the beginning of my journey. Starting out at nine years old, I just recalled some time spending with my grandmother, along with my other three brothers, my siblings. Growing up, uh, waiting for a time for a life with my father and my mother who had divorced at the time. And it just appeared to be a lonely time. Of course, we always had excitement and fun uh, with my other three brothers, but we, there was a longing there, uh, a desiring of something more. But I remember my grandmother, her name was Lillian Randall. She always prophesied and prayed for us and laid her hands on us often. And she would always tell us that life was going to be better for us. She would pray for us and tell us that there was a great calling upon our lives and that we had significance and that we could do anything. My mother, who was a very strong woman of God, who continued to raise us as a single parent, she prayed with us and kept us going, but oftentimes we could see our mother's hurt in knowing that she had to raise us alone. But God was always with us. But I remember a time when my grandmother just prayed for us and she began to tell us the things that God would do in our lives. And when she got to me, I was of course the third one. She would always say, um, there's something special. She said, I can't put my hands on it, but I know that God has something special. But before she left this earth, she was able to tell me, God put a word in your mouth that you'll be able to preach the gospel and tell many about Jesus Christ. And at the age of nine years old, I felt the power of the Holy Ghost resting upon my life and resting upon my other three brothers. And it was just been phenomenal. My baby brother who continues to preach the gospel and I praise God because my mother, she was always a strong woman of God. She always told us, be strong in the Lord. Continue to do what God called you to do. Of course, things wasn't always pretty. We struggled. There were times we didn't know where our next meal would come from. But God would always provide. There were times that we would always say, if God is God, then help us, oh God, to have faith in you. So I learned about having faith as a child. There was a church that we belonged to. It, uh, it was named uh, Faith Tabernacle Church. And in that church, we was always as if we were the PK kids because we were the only kids that were there. And we could sing and we could do different things in the ministry. And we would always be on the front street. Like they always made it sure that we, we stayed out front. But I thank God because there were times that we didn't want that call. We just wanted to know, you know, God, you know, if this is like it is, if we're going to struggle, then how do we continue to do what you want us to do and struggle at the same time? Well, growing up as a teenager, I walked away from God and I tried the world. I tried the streets and I did my thing. I, I did what all the young people wanted to do. I went to clubs. I partied. I had fun. Yes, it was fun. I don't testify that it wasn't fun. It was fun that drew me. It was a fun that I had never experienced because I was raised in the church. However, getting out there, I got a chance to get a taste of the drugs and the alcohol and the party life. Oh yes, I did do that. I did have my days in which I wanted to know 
um, how do I entertain and get out there and have fun like I see everyone else having? But there was something that would often speak in, in my spirit, even in the clubs. And I could hear those old scriptures such as, the day you hear my voice, harder not your heart. And I would listen, but I would try to get that out of my head because I just wanted to have fun. But the more I wanted to have fun, the more I saw myself sinking, sinking deeper into more issues. I had my first child at the age of 17 years old. Yes, I did. And I wanted to give up because I thought I had let my mother down. I thought I had let everyone down. And then the main thing was I didn't want it to be viewed negatively in the church because we know how church people can be. They can be your worst hurt. But I made up in my mind that I was going to raise my, my daughter, be strong for her as my mother was strong for me. I felt like I didn't need anyone to help me to do that, but I did need God. I became very, very um, quiet at times because I just, I just started to feel depressed and sad a lot of times. The smile that people saw, it wasn't real because I felt like I had let myself down. It wasn't against my daughter because she meant the world to me, but it took away a lot of my dreams that I thought would come true as I thought, but that wasn't the dream. The real dream was what God had prepared for me. And I made up in my mind that I would raise my children and then I got married at the age of 19. My husband married me. He made me happy, but we wasn't saved. And so I wanted to know, okay, there's more to life than just partying, having fun because I didn't want to have to leave my daughter with my aunts and uncles as I was seeing myself doing, seeing them feed her while I go and have fun. So I put a stop to myself. I talked to my husband, let's get my daughter and let's raise her. Let's make her the, the center of our lives. Well, we did that. We took our daughter with us. We wouldn't party in front of her because I always was trained to certain things you just don't do in front of your children. Well, in the meantime, we wasn't saved, so we had to make up in our mind how we were, we were going to live that life as well as raise her in a healthy home. But life wasn't healthy because we struggled. We didn't have anything. We just decided we were going to get married. A year and a half, two years later, I had my second daughter, still struggling. No money, no school, no jobs. My husband had a small job, but in that job, he didn't make enough for us to do anything. Not enough to even pay our $50 a month rent. We struggled, we got evicted. Things happened to us. I'm not ashamed of those stories because those are the stories that made me. We struggled in those times and people would often talk about us and say things about me. Then my husband, he became really deep into the drug life. Cocaine took over our family. I wouldn't go that far because I wanted something more. I got saved and he wasn't saved. In 1984, I gave God my life during that time, people would often tell me, you need to leave him. And I don't advise this to all young women to tell you to stay, but it was something about it. My prayer warriors, those that stayed with me, was my mother and my husband's mother, Mother Elnora Massey Thomas, and Thelma Scott, who is my mother. They told me, they told me say, pray. Well, oftentimes we don't like to hear that word just go pray because we don't think that that's enough but I made up in my mind that it is enough because faith is the substance of things hoped for 
And even when I wasn't saved, I knew faith worked. So I made up in my mind, I'm going to go and I'm going to believe in God concerning my husband. And at that time, crack was overtaking us. He was taking even our food stamps to sell and to not even give and make us do. And one day he just told me, I'm not deserving of you. Leave me. Now, out of everybody that I would have thought would tell me to stay, I would have never thought that my mother, my own very mother told me, she said, this is not him. Stay because who he is is who God called him to be. I caught on to faith and I went to the prayer meetings, noonday prayer when most people are at work and young people are trying to get their, what they call their grind, go make their money. I went to prayer and I was in between two older mothers they just kept on telling me to tell God, thank you. There were times I didn't know why I was thanking God because I had nothing to thank him for because everything was going wrong. But I kept thanking him because I believed in what they told me because they were my spiritual coaches. They were telling me, just thank me, just thank God. In everything, give him thanks. And I put that particular scripture in me in everything, not for it, but in it. Give him thanks. And I didn't have anything, but people were giving me things. I had to have furniture given by people. I was evicted time after time. But then God made a way. And I will tell you, he made the way. And he made the way clear and he made it straight. So I want you all to know, that God saved my husband, filled him with the Holy Ghost, and all of my children took care of my children. Well, let me talk about ministry, how we got into the ministry. It's been 21 years of serving in the ministry as a pastor's wife. Prior to that, answering the calling of God in 1984, the Lord blessed me and continued to bless. I've been able to travel different cities, different countries, different states, and it's been amazing. Some of those times I wasn't preaching myself, but I was able to travel with others to watch the ministry and how God would use others in their lives. Of course I was running. I really didn't want to just accept the calling, but I finally just surrendered to God and, and just said yes. And in my yes, in doing the things of God, it's been amazing once you accept the fact that you say yes to God. Of course, a lot of those years I struggled with fear, and, but my yes continued to uh, push me into doing more and more for God because it's all about Him. And I had to make sure that I knew and others knew that doing the things of God, you have to put God first. And when I made up in my mind I would do that, uh, I wasn't confident in, in ministering the Word of God because I was always looking at my flaws, always looking at uh, what if they don't like me? What if they don't think I sound right? Or I'm going to come out right? What if I don't say it just like they want me to say it? Of course, there was one thing I knew for sure, that the anointing was upon my life. And with that in mind, I continued to just strive and to give God the yes in knowing that God, I will protect this anointing by way of just doing what you call me to do, even if I'm hurt from it because they don't like me or because they don't like what I say. But God, if you tell me to say it, I'll say it. And so with that in mind, it has opened up many doors, just the obedience. And I admonish any one of you to just obey God because when you obey Him, the doors will come open, not just to go to places and platforms, 
But the type of doors that I'm speaking of is the lives of people that need a word from God. Because when the door of their hearts are open, then that's your moment. And I knew for sure that if I knew that I could help someone along the way, then that meant that that was for me to step in that door and to help them to know Him as I know Him. And let God deal with my flaws later. And so I just say, I thank God because I'm excited for the journey. I pray daily that God be edified and glorified in my life so that he would get all the glory, the honor that belonged to him. You see, because waiting on God is never a waste of time. But when I wait on God, I expect God to move. And for every challenge that I've had in my life, I've always made up in my mind that God you can do this I know that if you told me that I can I can go here I can go there to spread your gospel that you will meet every one of my needs and that not only so but you will bless the needed one those that are out there that's hurting like I've hurt there were times that I wanted to commit suicide but it was the word of God that brought me back to life and I give God glory I have a baby daughter, her name is Jasmine, and I wanted to get rid of Jasmine. But what if I would have gotten rid of Jasmine, I wouldn't be able to see her used by God, going forth in a ministry that's not like mine. But I promise you, it's going to bless the world. I believe that because I see the anointing upon all four of my children, how God's going to bless them like He blessed my life. I can't count on man like I'll count on God. But because I count on God, I know that I'll never fail. I give God all the glory. And I pray that some of you, you may be caught in between that place where you feel like, okay, God's not going to come through for me. When is my time? Really, your time is now. Your time is in your tears. Your time is when you're, you're crying. Because there's going to come a day you're going to reap joy. Not only are you going to reap joy, but you're going to prosper. You're going to be in health, even as your soul prosper. So whatever you do, do the will of God. And that's what I made up in my mind to do. Because I lived too many years trying to make other people happy. And make other people feel like I had to do it like they wanted me to do it. But I found that, that God can use you with your flaws and all. And He has shown me time after time. Your flaws, nor your issues, or my problem. Just your obedience. And I made up in my mind, I won't make God unhappy with me because I didn't do His will. If I do His will, no matter what, I just want to make sure that God is happy with what I do. And that's because I made up and I've said I would do His will and not mine. So God, you be glorified. And I pray for someone out there. Hold on to your faith. Those old cliches, back in the day, the mothers, they didn't know what to tell you, but baby, pray, stay on your face. You may go and you may get some counseling, that's good. You may go and get someone to tell you that how you can come out of it. But trust me, your faith and your prayer life will take you places that no one can take you. And I'm seeing it daily. I pray that you be blessed by my journey. Yes, and if you would like to follow me and hear more about my testimony in detail, please purchase a book on Kindle 
behind her brain, volume two.